Hello my friends and brothers. I would like to touch a topic today um, that is very uh, difficult because uh, when I will tell you things you will most likely be very offended because your intelligence will be uh, insulted. But this is not my purpose to do this. Uh, my purpose is to show you the truth of the Word of God. You see, there is many, many Christians that have no idea of the depth of Satan's lies. And they fall for it. Uh, there is this, um, the two old sayings, uh, one of them is uh, that it is easier to fool someone than to uh, uh, convince that person that was fooled already. And the other saying is that the bigger is the lie, the more truthful it sounds. So, basing on those two sayings, please don't think I am trying to insult you, but try to be open-minded. Try to look in the topic I'm going to bring to you in a way like you never know before what you were told, like, like you are fresh, like you are a child in a school and you are being told new things. Don't think about what you were, what you were programmed. Because we were all programmed by the satanic uh, doctrines of lies. Let me give you an example. Okay? So just think of this. Have you ever seen uh, satellite discs on people's houses or yards? Have you ever noticed that none of those satellite discs, satellite, um, never ever faces up to where it's supposed to be satellites? They always face sideways to face transmission towers. They are just antennas, not connect, not disconnecting us with satellites, because there's no satellites. You've been lied. Um, let me give you another example. For example, <clears throat> moon landing. You see, when they came with moon landing in the 60s, 68 or 7. The technology was very poor. So they could fool millions of people by making a, a play in Hollywood that will look like we are landing on a moon. But ever since, it will never be repeated again, ever, because the technology is too high and people will detect the, uh, the lies and, and the hoaxes very easily. And that's why they don't show much of those old movies about moon landings. They kind of hidden because they they are afraid that people might, might discover their, their lies. Uh, like, think of this. In, in 1968, I think, when, when astronauts supposedly got to the moon, President Nixon got on a phone that was a landline phone and spent about half an hour or more talking to the astronauts on the moon in the 60s 
when now with this old technology when i go out of town i'm losing signal i cannot talk to people on my phone that is supposed to be super high tech but in 60s nixon was able to talk for a long time with the moon and nobody put two and two together um, another thing as an example have you ever seen a real real picture taken from the space of the earth but i mean like real picture not cgi not computer generated picture but regular picture black and white from camera that astronauts supposed to take right never everything is computer generated pictures and they give you a million explanations well i'll show you something okay uh, i will show you a, a, a huge hoax that nasa plays on people and here it is a proof okay this is a beautiful book okay big book and under patron patronage of nasa they are beautiful pictures of stars and galaxies and nebulas whatever they mean and they are awesome if you go through this book they are pages and pages and pages of beautiful pictures wonderful pictures of planets galaxies moon stars the only problem this is all lie this is all hoax these things never existed and let me tell you how i know that very simply look at these pictures okay i have few marked so so i can show them to you for example this is a beautiful picture of the moon okay now another picture is of this is um, some kind of object traveling traveling in the space okay and i don't know if you notice but right here it says one light year one light year okay so what is one light year did you know that one light year this is 5.879 of trillion miles so almost six trillion miles just barely missing six right trillion trillion has 12 zeros so 6.12 zeros of miles that means 6 billion trillion trillion miles not a million not a billion but a trillion miles so they tell me that this object that is one year light year away from us is taken from hubble telescope that is on the supposed orbit of the earth that is from between 400 to 1200 miles away from the earth so barely pretty much on the earth if we're talking about that kind of distances 
So this Hubble telescope took a picture about six trillion miles away from the Earth. What kind of technology we have that we can take six trillion miles away picture with such a great details, you know? And the moon that supposedly is only 239,000 miles, that's all they can do? With this kind of technology, they could probably zoom it and have a scent looked at like under microscope. But if there is a scent on the moon, of course. But this is the best picture of the moon they can bring us. But they can do no problem something that is almost six trillion miles away. But this is not the end. Look at next picture. Okay. There is a whole bunch of them. I just I just go farther and farther, okay? Like beautiful pictures and all those things, you know, all those nebulas, galaxies and whatever. Now, this one is, uh, this is a planetary nebula, this one right here. And it says 2,000, 2,000 light years. And thousand is not a six trillion miles. Thousand, we add three more zeros. That means it is almost six quadrillion miles. Quadrillion. I can't even imagine that number. That number is with 15 zeros of miles. But no problem. Technology is such a great that we can get this picture with such details. But that's nothing. That's nothing. Because we go farther on the book. And you see, this is beautiful again. 2,000 miles. That means 12 quadrillion miles. Okay. So we go farther. And this one, look at those pictures, how great they are. But this one is 13,000 light years. So that means, I don't even know the number, 13 times 6 quadrillion, thousand, six quadrillion miles. Oh, 13. 13 times 6 quadrillion miles. I don't know what the number is. It's just like outrageous. And uh, let's go farther. Look at this. Um, this. This is actually Hubble X Emission Nebula. This one. And this one is 1.6 million light years. Beautiful. Look at this picture. I don't even know the number. With a six that, that will be uh, 18, 18 zeros so thousands of quadrillions million of quadrillion miles but we have a picture beautiful picture right and then we go to the next one is two another one two and a half million light years and then we go <laughs> Look at this. This one is this one right here is 300 million light years. And this one is only 400 million light years. So gazillion quadrillions of miles away. And we can make picture like this, but and there is one more. Wait, 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 wait. I got some one more. 600 million light years. This one. How awesome. How awesome. But with this kind of technology, we this is all we can do, right? But the same picture I can make 
with my camera, I have the, actually, you know, you can have a Nikon P900 camera and you can make this kind of picture, no problem. But they have a, having this kind of technology, that's the best they can do in such a book, right? We could, we don't have to go to the moon if, if that was possible because we could like zoom in and check everything out like under mic microscope but but we didn't so this is i know that nasa lies and this is a proof of those lies that everything here is computer generated images of something that never existed never existed so Actually, let me show you something. One second. You see, this I have a camera that is Nikon P900, and and I made few pictures of the moon. You see, that's my camera. Okay, and uh, those pictures I made. Uh, here you go. There you go. Those are pictures made by my camera, okay? And um, this camera is $600, uh, but they say they have a technology that's unbelievable. But you, you want to see a real star? Uh, let me show you a real star, okay? Somewhere right here. All right. So this one, did you know that this is, is a real star? This one is actually one star. This and this is one. I'm sorry. This is the light hits the, the thing. But this too is a one star that actually pulses. Pulses. So it changes in, in kind of like, like brings up light and takes the light away. And it's like pulse, 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 pulse. And this, one, this is the one. It's all red and yellow. And this one... It's another star that also is one star this and this pictures here you see this is one star so this four pictures is one star that means the colors go like from side to there's also like a pulse they kind of like pass pass so it changes from green to yellow i mean to blue to yellow to red and whatever and it go like on and on and on and on. they never show us this ever but i made those pictures and this is one star just above my house so so this is how i know that we've been lied to you know we've been lied to because the real the, the truth uh, of, of real life doesn't prove what what they show us right so you see you would ask why why would they do this what's their reason very simple first and i will get to this a little later but this is a satan lie and deceiving millions of people for a purpose of reducing god to nothing and replacing him with himself and with lies but on a on a world level on an earthly level this is a multi multi billion dollar business all over the world imagine this all the hollywood movies making movies about star trucks or star wars the space whatever all the toys they sell all the uh, t-shirts i mean like everything and also nasa gets and and every other country space projects space uh, they get billions every year or every millions every day and nobody controls this money nobody because they make like one fake Hollywood video and you know and everything else is, is going away. So that's the main reason. 
but but the, the, I mean that is the reason. But the main reason is Satan agenda, and we'll go to that later. Um, so, what is real science? Okay, real science is when you have a theory, some kind of theory, then scientists do repeated experiments and when those experiments every single time they are repeated they come up with the same result right so when that happen that means that that when those results are the same that means that the they prove the theory so now we have something that was theory first and now we know as a fact because it's scientifically proven. Now, what is pseudoscience? Pseudoscience is when we have a theory and we accept the theory without any experiment. All right. So let me give you an example. When you when you take uh, different size containers right and you connect them on the bottom with two and you pour water in one what happened you can repeat this experiment over and over and over and you can always have the same result that when you pour water into the container the water will always finds find its level and this is the this is the uh, scientific uh, scientific proof that water finds its level and water is flat always but no pseudoscience forces on us this theory that nobody ever could prove otherwise that actually ocean that is on the globe earth round ball earth is curving okay nobody could prove that ever the 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 reason they put behind it they bring to the picture gravity, right? But gravity could also not be proven. Because you see, when something falls down, that is not a gravity. This is a simple physical law of density, right? And when you put something in a liquid, this is called buoyancy if the liquid is more dense then the object will float if the object is more dense then it will sink same thing with the air in the air if, if balloon is less dense it will fly away if rock is more dense it will fall down to the play comes also a little bit of mag magnetism, but that's very small portion of it. But mainly density and buoyancy is what makes things go up and down. So if you take buoyancy and density and magnetism out of picture, tell me what else is this magical force gravity nothing you see this is nothing that can like hold oceans around the the earth but at the same time allow little bird fly little butterfly fly or smoke goes up but it holds buildings and everything holds together but smoke goes no problem or children jump no problem but everything else is very tight you see think of this 
they tell us that um, that our Earth, supposedly bowl, is almost twenty-five thousand miles radius on the equator. So think of this. When they tell us that when ball is um, turning, when, when Earth is turning, every 24 hours have a one full turn. So if you take this almost 25,000 miles and divide by 24, you have 1,036 miles per hour. That means if you stand on the equator within one hour, you will travel 1,039 miles. And at that moment, your speed is about 269 miles faster than speed of sound. But you feel nothing, you can talk both directions, your hair doesn't fly away, nothing. Like smooth like a mirror in the morning. Smoke goes up, but we travel 1,030 miles an hour. Well, but I'm not here to, to actually talk about flat uh, about you know proving uh, you know why I don't believe that we are on a ball and all this actually I am here to prove but not because of scientific reasons but because of the Word of God because in a word of God this is black and white and there is not a single proof for any other shape of the earth there's nothing about earth spinning and earth being ball and and you know circling the sun nothing nothing but everything else proves and and points to earth being stationary being level being uh, set on foundations and uh, and think of this you see those words those sayings like for example the heaven is up the earth is down it has a reason you know this is not just saying because you see heaven up and we are down but this has biblical grounds. You know, if we are on the ball, then up would be every single direction. Up and down would be up, right? Or down, or whatever you pick. But God is God of order, not confusion. So, things like that are, are not just by accident, you know, figure of speech. People are repeating the sayings like sunset and sunrise. Not because we go around sun, but because sun goes about circling the earth, above the earth. So those sayings are not figure of speech. Those sayings are based on God's creation. You know, now in this point, I'm pretty sure most of you get a little bit offended. Get a little bit and, you know, uh, like, you know, he's stupid or whatever. But, and, and you try to bring what you've been programmed to, to the picture. And try, everything I say, try to like disprove by, oh no, because this and that. Please. Try to be open-minded, because we're going to go to the Word of God. And you cannot argue with Word of God, but I guarantee you will try to bring up this 
pseudoscience cultic belief that many many Christians fell into so let's go farther okay let's leave this thing and um, because I kind of um, jumped ahead of what I wanted to say uh, you see Satan hates God and Satan wants to replace God remove him Satan hates the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for yours and my sins Satan hates that fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and ascended to heaven Je Satan hates the fact that Jesus by the sacrifice on the cross paid in full complete punishment for our sins and erased those sins from our account took them upon himself so we can actually be washed clean and face God and be accepted by him Satan hates this Satan wants to disturb our thinking Satan has to wants to put our minds on a wrong path on the wrong track of thinking just away from who Jesus is who God is what is his creation hey Satan wants to bring false ideas because he's master deceiver you see the reason why Satan pushed this agenda of of putting us on a spinning ball is that think of this when God created this world he created us for the purpose of his pleasure and we were the center of his focus it goes through all the Bible we are the same center of God's attention and God looks at us from heaven down to the earth God Bible says that God sits on the throne in heaven and we the earth are his footstool tell me how that is possible with spinning ball in the galaxies so you see when you think of this you cannot reject fact that God exists and God created us and he has a purpose for for us but Satan wants to remove this idea and by putting us on a little tiny ball that travels around the Sun and with the galaxies whatever we are a little dust in a corner of the universe very insignificant tiny meaningless and this was the moment when Satan was able to introduce evolution you see if we know that we are created by God and we center of his thought how you bring evolution impossible but when we are spinning as a dust somewhere unknowing where we are meaningless our life means nothing and God is cannot be found then evolution makes sense everything boom came out of nothing and everything is out of nothing so this is Satan's idea that's why Satan did it okay and uh, his lie is huge on many levels and this one of these main levels is this idea and out of that goes every other direction just to take us away from God to put us on a path that leads to destruction so 
uh, let me let me get together my thoughts because uh, I get kind of off track. So think of this. Um, God brought this idea that you know we are traveling on a ball and and that um, sun is hundred and four times bigger than the earth and then uh, 93 million da million da million miles away from the earth that's total bogus lie and nobody could measure that anyway so why do we believe it because we are programmed to believe pseudoscience Satan told us that moon is about quarter size of the earth that is huge and is 200 almost 40 miles thousand miles away from us when you go outside at night and you have a moon have you ever took a really a look at the moon and tried to like okay how far is it it's right there it's close I'm not sure but I'm guessing it's no farther than 30 miles and it's small and you see old Hebrew Asian Hebrews and all worlds that lived at that era understood that because people look and they see and they can put a common sense to what they see but we are trained not to believe our common sense you know you know that something is flat because you see it but they tell you this is round and we are trained to believe this you see this is what um, what we have to uh, decide should we believe the cult of pseudoscience or should we believe the word of God you see I'm Polish and I'm ashamed that this Catholic official Copernicus was the first who actually planted the idea and then Catholic Church which is in my opinion run by Satan at least from some point in history this Catholic Church forced this idea of spinning ball around centered sun but before that era before that happened the whole world understood it and knew it for sure that that earth is a plane and is unmovable that everything goes around above the earth I mean Sun moon stars they are all circling the earth above we are not going anywhere we are held by God's power set on foundations and this is what this is what old world believed that earth is playing set on foundations that the foundations were sunk in the surrounding us ocean and the ocean was held by wall made of ice which by the way when they brought this picture of ball they shrank this wall into another continent that never exists and call it Antarctic but this is nothing else but the wall surrounding the earth actually the ocean that holds the earth 
on set on foundations and um, they understood that all this was covered by the dome-like firmament hard and strong and inside of this firmament there were openings and through those opening came water that was actually above the firmament i know i sound like crazy but we will go to the word of god and you will see so you see when flood during the noah time came the gates of heaven were open and the water poured down and filled the dome covering the earth imagine how that would be possible on a ball beside the point they understood that moon and sun are pretty much the same size and are very small and very close to the earth and the stars are and sun and stars and moon they are all inside of this dome not in a universes galaxies or whatever they understood this that all this is firm established can never be moved and is held by god's power that's the understanding of ancient hebrews and ancient world but since copernicus they forced the idea and they teach people now without any proof any proof all the pictures images from space are computer generated all fake i just showed you this book all fake all fake and so here is what here is what what we are told okay we are told that that we live in a actually we know we live on a universe with moon and high sun a huge and all far but 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 bible speaks differently so i get kind of off track so uh, forgive me for my being uh, inconsistent maybe in what i'm saying by, and repeating myself but here me show you let's go to the bible okay let's go to the bible and um and i just want to remind you i just want to remind you be open-minded please be open-minded because i guarantee that when i will read the bible for you you will kind of back in your mind downplay the verses trying to fit them to what you were programmed but please be open-minded okay so we were told by pseudoscience nobody could check that anyway and anyhow basing on this stupid pictures of quadrillion of gazillions or billions of whatever thousands of miles light my whatever. they are all lies so we are told that this universe is still evolving they are supernovas they are superstar being born and expanding and all this so let's start with this idea and see what word of god speaks 
okay actually before we go there let me show you a few things okay let's start because you see satan always when he lies i guess he gets fun from it or maybe that's how he get you know his uh, hormones going or whatever you call it he always brings the truth to the light but puts it in such a way that nobody believes it you see again this old saying that when a lie is huge it makes more makes it more truth truthful it sounds more truthful so satan brings this lies to the open i mean brings the truth to the open and nobody believes it although the truth is everywhere so let me show you a few proofs for that okay so first that's actually not satan but i need to show you this okay this is by the way this is great book great book that actually speaks about bible and flat earth and if you get it as i strongly suggest okay but this is the old map from 18th century made by people who tried to destroy this false evil idea of spinning ball and they tried to show how we really are created so this is the map and actually i have a t-shirt with map that's how the map look like but this is the same here so this you see notice this is the ice wall that is supposedly antarctic but there is no continent like that this is what holds the and this is uh, we don't know exactly how it goes how far the walls if there are corners or if this is far we, we don't know because nobody goes there because there is a treaty actually there's a treaty antarctic treaty you can google it that nobody can go and explore antarctic but that's beside the point so the reason i'm showing you this okay so look this is the real world map and look what satan did okay have you ever seen this united nations emblem look at this actually like that do you see any resemblance here you see this is for years being fed to us like an image that means nothing you know this is picture from space whatever but this is flat earth and look at those leaves they actually are the ice wall so satan brings this as a joke that we can actually get used to the idea of spinning ball and that that is meaningless so that's the lie but but you see this is not only this like for example you see there was in in 50s before moon landing a lot of people used to use newspapers and stuff and they used to go to somewhere you know and lay those newspapers in like newspaper holders and here's one of the newspaper holders okay and you can see is i don't know you can see it but this is uh, let me see if you can see it is in 1953 it's made in 1953 so before moon landing right suppose so look what it shows coincidence but this is flat earth another thing you see they make so many so many things like that to show the truth but nobody thinks twice about it like for example here is a german from east germany so that's before the wall fell from east germany a, a clock and guess what's on it you see 
The whole world is corrupted, but there is a flat earth. Another club, you see, that's the Japanese. Beautiful clock, but flat earth. Another one, this one is like gorgeous, look. This is bad, and I have like many of those clocks, different kinds, but I just bring you a few, for example. This is a beautiful box, all right? You open, and what is inside? Flat earth. And those are not new, those are old. They are vintage. Uh, and here is a beauty. Here is a beauty. Look at this. You have to look carefully, but there's a little thing that actually I can turn the flat earth. But you see the sun? And on the other side, if I turn it, there is a moon. I mean, it will take a while. But the moon is right there. Um, maybe you can see it or not. But you see? So the Satan brings the truth to the open. But people don't put two and two together. We believe the pseudoscience because we are trained. We are programmed to believe the lie, the Satan's lie. So, so let's let's start now with this Bible verses that speak the truth. Okay. So let's go. To, to the verse that actually responds to the idea that this world is expanding and constantly evolving. All right, so let's go to, uh, to the Genesis. You see, Genesis is the first book of the Bible, and there is no room in Genesis for any figure of speech. Everything in Genesis is just plain truth. Because that's base of our creation, right? So, here you go. If we go to... Uh, actually, before we go there, let me do this. Because I'm going to read a lot of verses. Okay? A lot of verses. And I prepared a list of those verses for you guys if you want to maybe stop you know pause the computer and write those number those verses or make a photo or whatever here's the list of those verses okay let me do this i'll do it slowly and here here are those verses i will read them all okay I don't know if you can see them or not, but when I will read, I will also um, tell you what verse I'm reading. So let's start with the Word of God now, after this short introduction, okay? So, and I was thinking maybe I'll go by subjects, but I decided to go just, just keep going through those verses without any order. So they will be very mixed, you know, there will be firmament, there will be stationary, there will be this, 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 this. But on the list I have kind of grouped, okay? So let's start. So supposedly we are expanding and evolving. So what Word of God says, we go to Genesis 1, uh, sorry, Genesis 2 verse 1. And it says, that, and I'm reading from, uh, I'm reading from King James Version. Okay, I'm not used to, so I might little mess up, but here you go. And, oh, okay, let, let's read it. This is Genesis 2, verse 1. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Okay, how you find that? Are we evolving or are we finished? All right, so now let's open to the first chapter of Genesis. And let's start with creation of the world, okay? And we start with verse 6, and we, were, we will read uh, through verse 8. So 6 to 8, Genesis 1, and we read this. 
And God said, let there be a firmament. In here I have to stop because you see, the word firmament, this is something that is firm, right? This is something above us. And different translations use different words to describe it. And those different words and different translation could be words like this. So firmament is called in, uh, in the King James. Now I, I have ESV and some others that says firmament is called expense. Another calls vault and another calls solid arch and another calls dome. Actually, since we know that all this came from this crooked Catholic Church, accidentally, uh, ironically, I looked through many, many Bibles. This is the only Bible that shows something that no other Bible shows that I found. So here it is. Let me show you this. You see, this is Catholic New American Bible. Okay, New American Bible. By the way, this this New American Bible calls firmament dome. Okay, calls firmament dome. And uh, this, when you open to first chapter of Genesis, look what pictures we have. This is ancient Hebrew belief of the earth. <clears throat> so we have foundations, okay? We have earth that is flat. We have dome and water above the dome with gates for the water, water flat. We have throne of God. So when throne of God is here, we are his footstool. That's how they understood, and that's how Bible says. And here is sun and a moon and stars inside of the dome, and they tiny. They not huge. So why would Catholics put this picture in the Bible? I just leave it there. Okay. So knowing that there are different names for the dome or expanse or vault or or uh, arch let's go and read this so genesis 1 verse 6 to 8 and god said let there be uh, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and and let it divide waters from waters. And God made the firmament and divided waters which were under the firmament from the waters that were above the firmament. And it was so, and God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So, firmament, water above and water below. Put that to the universe and spinning ball. Okay, now let's go to Genesis 1, verse, 6, verse 14 through 17. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide day from night and let them be for sign and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights not one light and a reflector of that light, like we are told, but two great lights. So 
already contradiction, right? To pseudoscience. And the greater light, light to rule the day and a lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also and God set them in the firmament that was called heaven, right? So actually, there's three heavens we know from the Bible. The first heaven would be between us and the firmament. The firmament would be the second heaven. And the third heaven is where the throne of God is. Okay, so let's go through the Bible now and, and find those verses because they will be exciting to you. Okay, so we go first to Joshua chapter 10 verses 12 and 13 then spoke Joshua to the Lord in a day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel and he said in the sight of Israel son stand thou still upon Gibbon and thou moon in a valley of Ajalon and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies is not this written in the book of Jasher so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day so in this little picture, look, if sun is 104 times bigger than the earth, how sun could pinpoint stand above the Gibbon Valley? And moon, which is a quarter size of the earth, how pinpoint about the uh, Ajalon? See, sun and moon are tiny. And they are close and we are not spinning around the sun sun is going above the earth circling the earth and bringing day and the moon brings night it's like a flashlight if you take flashlight over the the, the, the floor you'll see the, the the flashlight make like a circle of light but past that is darkness so that's how sun and moon work so here it is and imagine if we are spinning i understand there's many people remember this be open-minded try not to fit that to the program that you are programmed with because i know you already start thinking oh well god is uh, you know all powerful and all this and could be earth and god can do it god could but god is is god of order not of confusion and uh, if we are spinning imagine how much it has to happen that everything stops an ocean thousand thirty eight thirty nine miles per hour we're spinning and God stops so oceans you 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 what everything what and then when it starts again day later everything again but if sun is going above the earth just say god, god says stop stops okay so let's go next let's go to first samuel second chapter verse eight the second part of, of verse eight for the pillars of the earth are the lord's and he had set the world upon them so we have foundations we have pillars that the world is set upon we're not spinning right let's go there next to let's go to second samuel verse second uh, samuel uh, chapter 22 verse 8 it says then the earth shook and trembled the foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was worth wrath. So 
The dome has also foundations, the edges of earth, right? And then let's go, let's go to um, same chapter, 22nd in 2 Samuel, verse 16. And the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the bread of his nostrils. Earth has foundations. How you argue with God? With pseudoscience? Let's go to um, First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 30. Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable and be not moved. Earth is not moving. Earth is stable and not moved. Let's go to let's go to uh, Job. Uh, Job nine, verse six and seven. Shake it the earth out of shake it the earth out of her place, and pillars thereof tremble, which commanded the sun, and it raised it not, and sealed up the stars. Sun did not raise. The earth was shaken out of its place. So earth has a place and was shaken out in it. Uh, not a universe. Let's go to Job, uh, Job 26, 11, and we go this. The pillars of heaven trembled and are un astonished at his reproof. So heaven has pillars. The dome is anchored on pillars. Uh, Job, Job 37, verse, 11, uh, verse uh, 18. Has thou with him spread out the sky? In here is used sky, but different translation used that instead of sky, they say uh, heavens or vault. Okay. So, has thou with him spread out the skies, which is strong and a molten looking glass? So, the skies are strong and a molten looking glass. Different translations use different phrases for that, for that verse, and they say uh, this molten looking glass. Uh, different translations say like cast metal mirror. Uh, another one says firm as cast bronze. I don't know what translation you have, so yours might use those verses. Uh, another one says heart as molten mirror. My ESV that I use it says heart as cast metal mirror. So let's go to Job. 38 verse 4 to 6 and we read where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth declare it if thou hast understanding who had laid the measure for for thereof if thou knowest or who had stretched the line upon it where upon the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Cornerstone usually is on the bottom of foundation of the building or structure. So, universe, spinning ball, no cornerstone there. Okay, so uh, let's go to um, let's go to um, Psalms. Okay, 
Psalm 19, oh sorry, Psalm 18, and we go to verse 15. Psalm 18, verse 15. Then the channels of water were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. Again, foundations, right? Here we go, Psalm 19, and we're going to read verse 1 to 4. And here it is. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed his handiwork. Day unto day uttered speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech, no language, their, their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words of the ends of the world. In them had he set tabernacle for the sun. Uh, the firmament in the, in the first verse, uh, in different translation, is, is called vault, expanse, or the arch. In the fourth verse, the tabernacle for the sun, in different translation, might be called tent. Okay, ESV says tent. So, obviously, something that holds the sun inside. And... Uh, I remind you again, don't try to fit that to the programmed way of thinking. Put that aside. Don't think of universe and galaxies. Think of what God says. Okay? And here we go. Let's go to the Psalm 93, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The word also is established, that is cannot be moved. The world is established and cannot be moved. Another spinning ball. Uh, Psalm 96 verse 10 say among the hidden that the Lord reigneth the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved the world is established and it shall not be moved not a spinning ball Uh, we go to Psalm 102, verse 25. Of old hast thou laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Psalm 104, verses 1 and verse 5. 1 and 2 and verse 5. Blessed the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with garment, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain? Some other translations say as a tent. And verse 5, that's Psalm 104. Who laid the foundations of the earth that sound not be removed forever? That who laid the foundations of the earth that should not be removed forever? Not a spinning ball. Uh, we go to Psalm 148 and verse 4. Praise him, ye heavens, 
of heavens and ye waters that are above the heavens. Where in the universe there are waters above the universe, above the heavens? The universe never ends, it's expanding. But the Bible says, God says, there are waters that are above the heavens. And heavens got called the firmament. Psalm 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. And some other Bible says expanse or dome. Catholics say dome. Proverbs, Proverbs 8, verse 29. When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandments, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, foundations of the earth. And what I'm reading are not all the verses. There is, I, I just picked some most obvious, but the Bible is loaded with the idea of earth being stationary and plain and flat. There's not a place I found that would suggest we are spinning around the universe. So... Let's go to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 13, verse 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be, dark, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So moon has is a source of light, not a reflection like we are told. Isaiah 13, verse 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall, shall move. Uh, sorry. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Earth has a place and will be removed at the day of his wrath. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 30, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon the light of the moon, not a reflection of the sun, but the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. In the day of the Lord, beneath, uh, be, bathed up the breath of his people, you got the picture. Sun is source, moon is source of light. Light. Isaiah 38, verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the, de uh, of the degrees, which is gone down in a sun dial of ah Ahaz, then degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. That's the story that, you know, the dial, the, the, the dial of the hours on the clock, sun clock, uh, was going back and going up. But that means that the sun moves, right? Not We not move, because then the whole earth would have to be like, Okay, Isaiah 40, 
verse 22. It is he that seated upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that strength out the heavens as a curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. Again, the circle of the earth, it could be the horizon or the icy wall. But there's a circle of the earth. And by the way, when they tell us that the horizon, on the, when you look at the ocean and you see ships disappearing, don't listen to the lies that this is the curve of the earth. This is the perspective of your vision. Your vision goes like this and that's why the, the the boat gets smaller and smaller and comes to the vanishing point and sometimes there is a moment when there's only half of the boat seen and they say this is like behind the, the curve that's not true because the reason why the boat disappears is caused by mirage which is caused by by the refraction of the droplets of water above the, the ocean uh, and uh, on a dry day you would see less of that when there is a moist day but this is all due to the perspective of our vision that's how we see and when we will read a little farther when Jesus was shown the whole earth obviously his vision was corrected and without the, the the perspective right so he could see the whole world but we got there okay so one sec so here it goes so one more time it is he that seated upon the circle of the earth and inhabitants thereof are gradually like us grasshoppers that stretched out the heavens as a curtain, some other translation says as a canopy, and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. Um, Isaiah 66, sorry, Isaiah 51, verse 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in a shadow of mine hand, and that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, Thou art my people, foundations of the earth. So now Isaiah 66, verse 1. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. How is that possible on a spinning ball in the universe? That's not, you see, you playing with your mind. You playing with the program you have. This is not a figure of speech. Why? Why would that be figure of speech? Just so to fit to your uh, to your picture? You see, that's how we are programmed. That's what God says. We are footstool of God. Habakkuk 3, verse 11. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation at the light of thine arrows they went they went and at the spinning of thy glittering spear i just got a couple left we are in new testament now and this is the moment when when i believe Jesus 
either have no perspective in his vision or his vision was removed because he's God in human form. And here we go. This is Matthew 4, verse 8. Again, the devil taken him up into the exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. How on the ball Jesus could see all the kingdoms of the world? Only on the plane. Matthew 5 verses 34 and 35. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. And Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Moon, give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. If stars, if stars fall from heaven on earth, in Revelation also says they fell to the ground. If there was universe and a star, imagine what would happen. But no, they are little, tiny, electric pulses or whatever it is. I show you the pictures. This is not what we are told. And the last verse I want to see, read, is in Acts. Heaven is my throne. This is Acts 7, verse 49. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? You see, three times God said in his word, the heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. If he said it three times, that means he mean it. He means it. So, here it is. You have to decide. You have to decide if you believe the science, which is pseudo, cultic, club, pseudoscience, that majority of Christians joined this cult of pseudoscience. You have to decide if you believe this cult or you believe what the Word of God says. I go for the Word of God. I stand firm. Word of God has the most authority. Nothing else compares. Thank you for watching. God bless you.